Welcome back to St. David's Worship Online. My name is Kristen Hawley, rector of this great parish in Washington, D.C., and we are so glad to have you alongside today for our Liturgy of the Word and Reflection. As always, a few quick notes before we go into our time together today. We have any number of uh, new Bible studies and book studies uh, that are open to all, so please do take a look at those, whether you're brand new uh, to the church, uh, have never done anything like this before, or are an old hand. Um, lots of good things happening uh, that we would love for you to join in. Uh, all of that information you can find on our website. Also for the younger uh, members of the parish and friends of the parish, we do uh, continue to have a um, an every other week gathering on Zoom where we're working on something called Compassion Camp, which is uh, in the style of a vacation Bible school program. Uh, that we're working on as well as a great flat St. David uh, that you can uh, pick up here at the church or download and print out to take along with you on your adventures along with a great book following Paul and Paul's adventures in the early church that we are using to model um, our flat, flat St. David's uh, journeys this summer around uh, D.C. and wherever our parishioners go. So please do look online for more information. We are moving towards uh, gathering outside. We've been given the final okay, hooray, uh, by the diocese uh, and told that uh, we can, uh, well, told that our proposals and protocols uh, that we shared with them are all um, approved. Uh, so please do look uh, for news about how we are going to start rolling out such gatherings. We will, as mentioned before, uh, do this as safely as we possibly can. Of course, adhering to all of the local uh, health guidelines as well as those set forth by our bishop and her office. Uh, so more information to come, but do look for opportunities to come and visit uh, with those people that you love uh, from St. David's if you have the chance and are able um, and healthy enough to do so. 
Last but not least, always a big thank you to those of you who continue to give, uh, those of you who have pledged for keeping up your pledges, and those of you who continue to give uh, above and beyond, or uh, our guests and visitors uh, from afar uh, who are also uh, giving so generously. I thank you for that. Uh, please do keep a watch for all of the other opportunities we have to be uh, the mission missionaries of the church. We are continuing to work on rolling out more and more opportunities to, to address things like food insecurity in this city, uh, poverty, homelessness, and continuing conversations on race and reconciliation. Lots going on uh, right now, even in the midst of the turmoil of the world, and that is because we are the church. And even if we aren't gathering, as I continue to say, in these uh, hallowed walls, we are still very much the church and we have not closed. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep getting involved when and where you can get involved and do, thank, uh, do continue to give and thank you uh, for doing that. Now, friends, let us worship together. Take a moment, light a candle, find a comfy chair, whatever you need to get in place and position to join us in today's Liturgy of the Word. On this first Sunday's Liturgy of the Word, I should say. Uh, for those of you who might not be uh, familiar with St. David's custom, the first Sunday of the month is always a first Sunday, meaning that our liturgies are brought to us by the youth of the parish. Uh, they do the readings and the prayers, and when we're here, so much more, the ushering and the ringing of bells. Uh, sometimes even offer our musical uh, pieces. Um, and our uh, homily is always directed uh, to the younger set. Though, as I am told often enough, uh, usually packs at least a little punch uh, for the adults among us. So please do join us for this first Sunday service. We are glad that you are here. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and for the sake of love gave everything. Son and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. My friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And now for our first reading from the book of Genesis. A reading from the book of Genesis. The same night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself, but when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The word of the Lord. Bye. 
You know, when I was young, I was always getting kicked out of my parents' house, out of my parents' friends' house, uh, always being told to go outside. And I think what they had in mind was to go outside and play on a structure uh, like this. This You may recognize where I am today. I'm outside in the playground, just outside of St. David's Church. You see, I was that kid and my siblings and my friends were those kids and maybe some of you were or are still those kids who had a lot of energy and you took it out on one another and sometimes took it out maybe on your parents' house. If you can't stop throwing one another around, they would yell at us, at least do it outside. And so they would kick us out to our yard, to our playgrounds, uh, somewhere else, uh, because we weren't very good at keep keeping our rustling and tumbling natures uh, just to floor space when we were in the house. We were often bumping into or jumping over and sometimes jumping off of furniture that the adults considered valuable. So outside, uh, we were sent time and time again. Even as an adult, I confess to you, my friends, that I get the urge every now and again to wrestle. I just want to grab people sometimes and pull them or push them, pin them to the ground, feel them push back and try to get the upper hand. You can learn so much about another person by wrestling with them, don't you think? You can learn their strengths and their weaknesses. You can learn their patterns, the way they think and move. You learn their breath and their smell. Those little telltale signs when they think they're winning or when, they're th when they think they're in trouble. It's a little bit like dancing, but much more personal and sometimes fraught with danger. In our first story today, we heard the, the story of Jacob again. Jacob, remember, uh, was always trying to take more than he probably deserved. And he made a lot of family members and a lot of friends very angry by cheating them out of the things that they loved. In today's story, Jacob has fallen asleep again the night before he goes to see his big brother after 20 years of running away from this brother. And while Jacob was asleep, a man came to him, we're told in his dream, and they wrestled. They wrestled, we're told, all night until daybreak, literally until the sun was about to rise. It must have been quite a wrestling match to last a whole night without either one of them winning or losing. Now, we do uh, hear that Jacob's hip, uh, Jacob's hip got knocked out of socket and he walked with a limp uh, after that. So we know that they weren't messing around, right? They pressed on one another all night, challenging each other, being challenged by the other. And it's only as the sun starts to shine on the new day that they actually speak to one another. And it's through their conversation, imagine them panting, still locked in some sort of wrestler's embrace, sweaty and tired, right? Maybe with, with Jacob still with this man in a, in a headlock. And it's only during this conversation that we understand, along with Jacob, that the stranger was no ordinary man. Instead, this stranger was quite possibly God, or an ancient, or an angel, sent by God. And before he leaves, this angel blesses Jacob, right? 
uh, in the same way that we bless you every time after this service, the same way that you are blessed in baptism, the angel blesses Jacob, gives him a new name and a new life. It's possibly the best trophy won ever after a wrestling match. Now, can you imagine? Can you imagine what wrestling with an angel of God must be like? That is what the writers of this story want you to imagine. You see, we believe in a powerful and loving God who not only loves us, but also comes after us and struggles with us when we try to hide or run away. A God who is willing to tussle with us and let us tussle with him when we're upset and when we're worried. A God who's a little bit frightening, but always wants to be connected to and with us, no matter what it takes. When we're sad, when we're angry, when we feel alone or ashamed, our God comes and finds us. Sometimes it's in our dreams. Sometimes it's through another person. Sometimes it's through silence or prayer. And sometimes it's just a good wrestling match with the angel of God. There's nowhere we can run. That God cannot find us, as Jacob learned that night. God does not, like our parents, kick us out of the room and tell us to go do it somewhere else. God comes and finds us and wrestles with us. There's nothing too bad, there's nothing too ugly, there's nothing too hurtful that God isn't willing to forgive, and nothing and no one is too hopeless that God isn't willing to fight for them, even to knock down some of those tables and chairs. This is our great God, the God of steadfast love who's willing to wrestle us and pin us to the ground and remind us of our need for one another and love for one another. Who, friends, who might need a good wrestling match in your life? Can you think of anyone who maybe has lost their way, feels disconnected from God or from others, who feels like literally they've been sent out to play by themselves on a playground. Maybe you can be the agent or angel of God sent to remind them of how much God loves them and how much we all need God and one another. Remind them that wrestling is far better than running away. Amen. for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, Marianne and Chilton, for our clergy and parish, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. 
I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or in trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deep, deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for Paul, Lawrence, and T.K. Jackson. I ask your continued thanksgiving for all the first responders, healthcare workers, and leaders working courageously to keep us safe. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Amen. All these prayers and those prayers left written on our hearts alone, we offer to you, O Lord, in the words your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, taught us. Say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each of you and those beloved to you this day and always. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.